Manitol. In the neuro ICU, Manitol is used for induction of hyperosmotherapy for management of symptomatic elevated intracranial pressure, or ICP. Manitol stays out of the normal cells, drawing water out of the cells, and shrinks the normal brain, to allow the edematous brain to have more space, and so decreases the ICP. Manitol does not decrease the edema itself. There are other mechanisms in which it lowers the ICP, such as shrinking the red blood cells. Manitol is a sugar in an alcohol that is not metabolized. It is excreted through the kidney, and it is partially dialyzable. Diuresis occurs within 1-4 to four hour of administration. The ICP starts to decrease to decrease after 10-15 to 15 minutes of administration, and the effect will remain for 3-6 to six hours after infusion stopped. The half-life of Manitol is 30-150 to 150 minutes. Cautions Manitol can precipitate into crystals that should not be infused into the patient. Visually check bag or vial for Manitol crystals, and always use Manitol filter in the IV line. Crystals may still be present even if not detected visually. Since Manitol induces diuresis, dehydration can be a complication, that may lead to decreased cerebral perfusion and shock. Do not co-administer in the same IV line with blood products. Potential complications include, dehydration and hypovolemia. Congestive heart failure, as fluid will increase in the vascular space. Aggravates electrolyte imbalances, such as worsening hyponatremia, and later may lead to hypernatremia. It can aggravate or induce AKI. It can precipitate into crystals that induce organ damage. Dose Generally, the initial dose is 1 gram per gram per kilogram, rounded to the nearest multiple of 10. Always know the total grams you are infusing. Maintenance doses are 0.5 to 2 grams per kilogram every 6 to 8 hours. Initial infusion is over 30 minutes, and follow-up infusions are over 60 minutes. Titrate to serum osmolarity range, such as 315 to 300 or 320 to 325, which should be measured every 4 to 6 hours. Manitol can also be titrated to the osmolar gap, which is the product of the measured osmolarity in the lab minus the calculated osmolarity. The calculated osmolarity equals serum sodium multiplied by 2 plus BUN divided by 3 plus glucose divided by 18. Normal osmolar gap is negative 10 to positive 10. The excess measured osmolar gap over the calculated, above the normal range is the mannitol effect. Osmolar gap range goals for elevated ICP are 10 to 15, or 15 to 20, or even 20 to 25. The titration of the mannitol doses to the measured osmolarity or the osmolar gap, osmolar gap. The general goal range for the ICP is 5 to 20 mm of mercury, and for the CPP is 55 to 75 mm of mercury. Monitor the vital signs, neurologic deficit, the Glasgow Coma Scale, pupils, hourly diuresis, fluid intake, hourly fluid balance, systemic and cerebral perfusion, cardiopulmonary function, potassium, sodium, magnesium, phosphorus, creatinine and BUN, and consider calculating the osmolal gap. If ICP monitor available, observe and record the ICP before and 30 minutes after mannitol administration. If not, monitor the neuro exam before and after. Monitor and diligent hourly urine output 2 hours before, and 4 hours after mannitol administration. Thank you. Check with your pharmacist for additional clarifications.